We've been shooting a lot in the last couple of years. Between gear reviews, photos of our own adventures, and paid photo jobs, all this creative work has started taking a toll on my body. In 2018, I started suffering from severe arm and shoulder pain to the point where I didn't even want to pick up a camera. For me, when I spend hours in one day with a camera in my hand, I start to feel it in my wrist especially. I get numbness and symptoms of carpal tunnel, and I know it's just going to get worse. So for two otherwise healthy individuals who have a passion for content creation, looking toward our 40s, we knew we weren't off to a great start. Fortunately for Danae and I, we have a physical therapist in our family. In this episode, we invited my brother Jeremy onto the channel to teach us how to take better care of our bodies so that we can continue to do what we love for many years to come. My name is Jeremy. I'm a physical therapist and I work in an orthopedic outpatient clinic where I specialize in more musculoskeletal injuries, overuse injuries, uh, preoperative and postoperative care. Overuse injuries. Uh, some people hear terms like tendinosis or tendinitis or overuse conditions. And in almost every profession we have some of these things, whether it be a computer programmer, a construction worker, or a doctor, or a dentist, anybody that does anything for a prolonged time period in a day, we see overuse injuries. And so the kind of starting point of understanding what an overuse injury is and how it comes about Sometimes it's good to just look at just anatomy. If we turn the skeleton to the side and you take a look at the unique features of the spine, it's got a nice little kind of S-curve to it where it starts here, comes back in and back out. They call these angles uh, lordosis and kyphosis, lordosis, kyphosis, and these are just the angles of the spine. But if we spend a long period of time doing one thing, so let's just take for example, I've got someone who's working on a computer and they're doing this eight hours a day, okay? Good posture, if we look at someone from the side, we'd say, okay, my ear should be in alignment with my shoulder, and my shoulder should be in alignment with my hip, and if we go all the way down the hip, and the knee, and the ankle, if we drew a line all the way down, there should be a straight line going through the side of someone. Think about a ball sitting on top of a cup, or a tee, something like that. It doesn't take any energy for me to keep this ball balanced right here. Now, if I start tipping the ball here, now it requires some sort of energy to hold this, right? Otherwise it's gonna fall, okay? But the energy, the, our base is no longer under the center. And so now the energy is required to hold this up. So take this, whether it be a ball, a golf ball, a bowling ball, or your head on your shoulders, if it sits up like this, it doesn't require a lot of external en energy to keep it there. Now as soon as that starts to tip forward, all these muscles, back here start to engage. Muscles that attach to the back of your head, back of the shoulders are now engaged. Now most of us, if we hold something like a five pound dumbbell in our arm, and we hold that for 15 minutes, you know, it starts to get tired. Even though it's really easy to hold, now try and do it six hours a day, just hold it like that. What happens to that muscle? It starts to fatigue, there's lactic acid, there's no more oxygen in the muscle, so we get tissue that starts to get angry and inflamed and we get muscle spasms and cramps. So we do this day in and day out and we start having problems with this connective tissue. We're gonna have tissue breakdown and start to have a lot of pain. Typically headaches, muscle cramps, spasms. Then if we do that for a prolonged time period, we have things along the, the connective tissue where we have bulge discs, herniated discs, and other issues. So maybe let's look at the wedding photographer, the person who's uh, really focused on what's happening multiple shots back to back and really going for that shot so you know coming in frequently kind of this forward position we talked about posture those forward shoulders we keep coming forward here and the head drops in to get that shot right so we kind of come into this kind of crouched almost that fetal position and uh, so now we go back and think about the principles of, of posture and alignment and how to avoid some of these injuries so first of all, is there a way we can do this with a little better alignment? So instead of kind of going to a crouch stoop position here, even sometimes going to like a lunge position where you actually thrust forward with your, with your knees and legs, and is it possible to keep the shoulders a little wider and come down? I know sometimes there's some angles you've got to get, but as you start to develop some new habits of better alignment here, using your knees and hips instead of flexing at your back, and can you keep the shoulders a little more broad and keep the neck back a little bit and use your knees and this way instead of this stuff. So in this position, looking at that lunge one more time, holding the camera close and moving here. Keeping your body more neutral here. 
lunging to get shots, you can go longer. If you need to get lower, get lower. This is a lot easier on your body than any of this kind of stuff. So neutral spine, a little bit of lordosis in the low back, bend at the knees and hips, and you can move forward and back this direction to get those shots here. So let's talk a little bit about heavy cameras. This is, this is a pretty heavy camera, and maybe this isn't even the heavy, heaviest in the industry. Just think about, we'll go back to anatomy for a minute. Think about your wrist, and you know, we talked about the alignment of the spine, but your wrist, you know, our wrist is designed, this is kind of considered kind of neutral position. If you want to grab something really strong, your, net, your wrist kind of falls into that neutral position. That's where you have the most strength and alignment. So that's neutral position for the, the wrist. That's not a problem. We can do a lot of things really functionally here, whether we're pushing and pulling, even twisting. But then we start getting angles where we're, where we're either fully flexed or fully extended or rotated for very long. Again, we get that same kind of fatigue factor where the muscle's tired, it's burning, and we've all felt that where you're just at max fatigue, there's no more oxygen in the muscle, and um, it just starts to burn and hurt. That leads to overuse conditions in the wrist and hand where we've got, you know, carpal tunnel, um, you know, tendonitis of the thumb or any of the, any of the fingers too. So we want to avoid that. So first of all, you have to say, is it worth it? Um, you know, there's a lot of really great cameras that aren't so heavy, and maybe that's going to be an option if you're going to be on shoot for eight to ten hours. Maybe you don't want to lug around the big heavy camera the whole time for all of your shots. So think about that first, especially if you're already dealing with some of these conditions. Second, how are you carrying the camera? So if you're around and you've got it in your hand, and you know you're kind of carrying it out by the side a lot, your shoulder's going to get really tired really quickly. So is there a place you can carry it close to your body? Just think about the way we carry our energy. If you can bring something close to your body, this is, this is a lot easier to do here. Neutral wrists here, so maybe I'm on shoot and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to my next shot and I'm right here and I'm walking around. Uh, this is an excellent place to keep the camera close to your body. I know some people use neck straps and that's a very heavy necklace. You put something like this with a strap around your neck, a lot of times it pulls us into this and if we're not paying attention, we fall into this really crummy forward posture, which if we looked at it, we'd say, oh, that's horrible posture, but we do it all the time. And so we're sitting here like this with this heavy necklace around our neck and a lot of pain. So again, it's okay to try and carry something, maybe, maybe carry the, the camera here, but think about your posture while you're walking around and keeping this camera close. The closer the camera is to you, whether it's here or even at your side, um, this is all better than away from the body because then you need more muscle energy to control this camera and you're gonna have fatigue and tissue breakdown. So, uh, so just a couple rules. The other thing is even just wrist position. Whenever you can keep that wrist more of a neutral position versus cranked back with what you're doing, you're gonna have a lot less of a tendency uh, towards some of these overuse conditions and tendonitis and carpal tunnel. Some of these activities per se aren't bad, but then after you've done them so many hours a day, some of the big areas are, you know, when you're at events or hiking or some of these hard to get areas where you have to carry a lot of gear and get into some hard to reach places. And so just evaluating your gear and what's that doing to your spine. Shoe wear is important. Now, if you're gonna be out there in hiking around uneven terrain, maybe look at a, a good supportive shoe, like a high top hiking boot, something with good stiff sole and traction. It's gonna give you adequate support and avoid maybe an ankle sprain, damaging equipment, damaging you. Uh, so start with the foundation, start with some good footwear. Uh, then moving up toward what we carry your equipment in. If you're carrying a lot of, sometimes just a shoulder bag might be adequate, but sometimes you gotta carry a lot of a gear, a lot of equipment, maybe that shoulder bag is really heavy. And just think about how you're carrying that weight. So maybe it's on one shoulder, what does that do to your posture and your spine and, and the load on your spine? So if, you're do, if you do need to carry quite a bit of equipment, it would be suggested to go ahead and use like a backpack where you can even out the, or distribute the forces to both shoulders and you can have better alignment and posture and, uh, and not so much always leaning. Distribute those forces across both shoulders, then your spine is in better position to carry that load and everything else seems to move a lot better and be better alignment. Most of us don't take the time for us, but if this is what you wanna do and you wanna do it for long hours a day, you need to take some time to take care of you and prepare yourself. So there's the element of, in general, people will say, hey, what, what kind of exercises are good for me? I'm off season, I have some time, I need to do some good for me. And I usually direct people towards some exercises like yoga and Pilates. And then there's some traditional strength training working on big muscle groups. And so um, I, I usually recommend some of these avenues for people when they have a little bit more time to focus on themselves. But I'd like to take you through several exercises that are very helpful um, for the profession that you have 
in maybe preventing and treating some of the conditions you have. And I would say these are kind of more maintenance exercises. Things you should do often, if you can find 15 minutes in a day to go through a few of these exercises, it's going to, uh, it's going to pay back quite a bit in your profession as far as giving you the longevity that you need. This first exercise, uh, just, we just need basic, a basic foam roll. This is an exercise most people find enjoyable after a long day of sitting in front of a computer or shooting. We need to find something that brings us back more to center, more of a neutral position. Most people like this exercise because it doesn't require a lot of energy. So if you're already tired, this is the go-to. This foam roll is firm, but it also has a little bit of give to it. So you lie down on this, just enough where you can sit and there's enough to support your head, enough room to support your head. And in this position, it gives you feedback and support all along your spine. And again, that forward head now has the opportunity to come back. And the shoulders naturally just fall back and takes the spine and just kind of elongates the spine. So they've done some dynamic x-rays and find you get a lot of distraction, almost traction, when you lie down on something like this against your spine. So the first position is really just lie down and relax, maybe count to 10 and just focus on your breathing and as you breathe out just relax let your shoulders fall back and then you just start moving up a little bit so maybe we bring the arms up out to the side here most people find this a little uncomfortable they're starting to feel stretched through their shoulders their chest okay hold that for 20 30 seconds and then we move up bring the arms up in this y position and just let your arms hang see how far you can go most people are pretty tight. Some people can let their arms hang down, they can touch the ground. Other people, I'm a little bit tight, I'm not able to reach the floor all the way. Okay, and then all the way to the top, let your arms just go. That's gonna stretch, you're gonna feel that stretch all the way through your mid back and through your neck and shoulders and down into your low back. And you may find some of these positions hard to hold and even relax into, but with time they'll get easier and easier and you'll find the ground coming a lot closer to your arms. Okay, so that's the first four positions and then moving your arms through a series of exercises where you actually bring the arms back and forth, moving the shoulders, allowing some gentle movement through the shoulders, and then moving into another one where we cross our arms here and all the way up overhead. Some great movement through our upper back and through shoulders. This next exercise, I just want to take a minute and look at big picture. Most of us fall into that forward posture. Again, that forward head rounded shoulders. So looking at big picture of how we change that, there are two things. A lot of times there's a, a muscle tightness. We've spent so much time here, the pec minor, some of these muscles that bring us forward have become tight. So we kind of fall into this. They call it a kyphotic or kyphosis. So we need to offset that by starting to stretch here. Again, with your posture, your posture awareness with the different activities that you're doing, you're shooting and you're editing and all the work of the computer, you're gonna start thinking about your posture. So, to change your posture, first of all, we need to stretch the tight muscles, okay? So we need to stretch these muscles. We looked at that with the foam roll, and we look at it with a doorway stretch that I'm gonna show you. Also, big picture, if you're going to work on strengthening, now we need to strengthen the muscles back here. So we need to change our posture here, shoulders back, chin back, we start to develop more strength back here. So moving into the doorway stretch, just find a doorway. Some people find doorways uncomfortable because they're too wide. You can also get a corner and you can stand in the corner and do the same activity, but I'll show you here. The idea is to arms up, bring your elbows in on the doorway, the door frame, and the hands here and kind of relax. Shouldn't have a lot of tension here, this should be a relaxed exercise. And again, we look at this lunge position. Stand one foot in front of the other and move forward and relax. So the key with this again is relaxing. We're gonna hold that stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. Again, the shoulders should be really relaxed. The place you should feel it anywhere through the front of your shoulder into your chest area. That's where, the, that's where you're gonna feel that stretch. Again, instead of a doorway, you can also just do a corner. Same thing, arms up, step through until you feel that. Don't crank your neck back and don't drop your neck low. Just don't, don't put a lot of anything into your neck. Just relax your neck and move forward. The next series of exercises would be great for the neck and shoulder also. And so we'll go through the first one, and we're targeting the big muscle group called the trapezius muscles that attach from the back of your head all the way down into the shoulders. And there's three big groups that go with that. Let's first start with the upper trapezius stretch. That's the muscle group that attaches from the base of your head down into the shoulders. 
So first, find neutral position, kind of bring your chin back a little bit, shoulders down, relax for a second. Then take your left arm, cross your body. Let me start with this left side. Bring one arm, cross your body, and put a little tension. Make sure your shoulders stay square. Pull some tension down through this arm. And then I want you to turn your head down the opposite direction a little bit and just stretch. And you should feel that stretch if you're doing it. And sometimes you can kind of adjust that stretch if you're feeling a lot of tightness. You can kind of fine tune the area where you're feeling really tight. We're trying to feel the stretch from the base of the head all the way back into the shoulder, anywhere along that line. If you're feeling it there, you're getting a great stretch. And you can kind of, like I said, micro adjust the head to find that area. And the shoulder again should be down and relaxed. So we do those on both sides. Other arm across, down and across, and, and stretch. Next one, go ahead and place one arm kind of behind your back. Let the shoulder just relax. This hand comes up over your head, and you're just going to use some fingertip pressure. Don't really lay into it hard. You're trying to really relax through these stretches. And then just relax here, and just with fingertip pressure, pull down the opposite direction. You should feel that anywhere from right under the base of your head all the way down to that shoulder. And again, other side, and pull down. The next one they call the levator scapula stretch. And that's a small muscle group that I think uh, you as photographers overuse quite often. That attaches from the top of your shoulder blade all the way to the base of your head. And so this is a hard stretch. Some people can't do this one correctly. And I'll hopefully give you a good demonstration so you can, you can do it correctly. First, take one arm, almost like you're trying to scratch your back right back here and point that elbow up toward the ceiling as far as you can okay that should that's the first position next you're going to look down away from that shoulder down toward your opposite knee and light fingertip pressure in that base of your head and again point with that elbow up and very gently pull down across and you should feel a really good stretch from here all the way up to here on that muscle that levator scapula Again, same thing other side, scratch your back, point that elbow up, and pull down the opposite direction. The next exercise isn't as much of a stretch as it is an exercise. So, it's almost like the funky chicken. Okay, I'm going to move this head. This is what you guys do great all day. So let's do the opposite. Let's pull the chin back. You're actually trying to bring your head. Think about that golf ball tee, the golf ball on top. So let's bring that ball back on top of the tee and let's hold that position. So we'll bring that back, hold that position, almost like you're trying to give yourself a double chin. And you're gonna pull and you're gonna hold that for about five seconds and then relax. And if you can't really do that well and you're having a hard time doing this, push forward first and then pull back and hold that for five seconds. Most people find that pretty difficult to do. This is a great exercise to do when you're sitting at the computer and you realize, my posture is really bad right now. Okay, I'm just going to do my chin tuck. I'm going to pull this back, do a few of these, and all of a sudden my posture is a lot better. Let's, let's look at a couple exercises that we can, where we can address kind of a forearm, hand, and wrist dysfunction. So first group, find a table about waist height. Um, and we look at different positions from the 12 o'clock, 3 and 9 o'clock, and six o'clock positions. You may find these really difficult to get into, and so just start doing them often and you'll find they get easier. So the first one, let's go to the 12 o'clock position with the arms and hands on the table. Slide back, keep your elbows locked out for all these exercises, and then bring your weight forward until you feel the stretch. And you might feel this through the palm of your hands, through the wrists, or all the way up your forearms. And you're gonna hold that for about 20 seconds and doing about two to three each. So that's the first position. And then go ahead and move both hands and flex them the other direction. And the same thing here, keeping the elbows straight. And this, again, you should feel this stretch all the way up through here, maybe down through the wrist and even into the other side of the hand. Okay, hold that for 20 seconds. So now next we'll move into the three and nine position. So again, elbows straight, bring the wrists together. And maybe you can't bring them that far together. Find the position that's comfortable and then put some weight into the wrists. Feel that stretch, okay? And then move right into the other position facing each other. And then press down. Okay, and we'll move into the six o'clock position. This is the most difficult for most people here. 
and turn your wrists all the way back, elbows straight, and just press down gently. If you can't make the time of 20 seconds, then it's too much pressure. Back off the pressure so you can hold the stretch for 20 to 30 seconds. We don't want to cause an injury with any of these stretches, so every day, maybe take it a little further, but just be gentle and relax through these stretches. And the last one, hands this direction. Close to the body, and downward pressure. So as a physical therapist, I feel like I've done my job when I give someone some good education and they can apply that education into what they do. If you enjoy what you do, you want to keep doing it. And so evaluate what you're doing. Sometimes we get so focused on the activities we're involved in, the shoot and all the stress and all the load we put on ourselves, we forget to take care of ourselves. And so take some time to evaluate some of your habits, some of your techniques. It's hard to change habits. But if you're in the position now already where you're having tissue breakdown and injury, you're going to lose the ability to keep doing what you love to do. So take some time to evaluate your process, some of the things you're doing. Can we change the way you're doing it? And usually you're the best person to figure that out. So take some of these principles we've talked about as far as alignment, spinal position, and overuse. Positions we're in for long hours, long periods of time, and evaluate and see how can I make that change. And make some time each and every day uh, to start working on some of these exercises uh, so that you can keep functioning and moving.